Welcome back to the English Lover 500. My dear friends, today I have brought this video to let you know uh, about the literary devices that are present in the poem The Heart of the Tree. So we have already done the explanatory part of the different uh, stanzas that are present in the poem uh, and we have gone through the little meaning of the poem uh, uh, like the stanza wise. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the literary devices uh, which are present in the poem to make it beautiful one and emphatic one. It actually adds flavor to the poem so that is why the poet use um, the poet uses all such devices to make it exemplary for others to actually follow the same pattern same set of pattern so that is why we we have seen that already what was in the poem we are going to look at the different literary devices without further delay let's move on to the first literary device that is uh, just let me erase that alliteration we we are going to focus on this particular thing and we have to understand what's the meaning of the alliteration what does it stand for like in the poem and what does it exactly mean the alliteration is a repetition of the consonant sounds okay focus should be on the consonant sounds consonant sounds uh, which are different from the vowel sounds okay obviously we know that what are consonants what are vowel sounds okay when there is a certain sort of obstruction of air when when you speak or utter any word then definitely or, or an alphabet or a letter then um, if there is obstruction then it is a consonant if there is no obstruction of air uh, when the flow of air is fast and and there is no breakage of uh, the the sound then definitely um, it would be a vowel sound so if there is the repetition of the consonant sound that means if there are lots of breaks obviously and that consonant sound is repeated uh, uh, whenever there are breaks at the beginning or the stress syllables of uh, the words then it would be alliteration getting used in the poem so uh, there are different examples that have been used in that one by the help of the example you will be able to understand I think better way um, then what is here like uh, in the in the poem we have seen that what does he plants who plants a tree he plants a friend of sun and sky he plants a home to have an eye um, in hushed and happy twilight um, hard the travel of heaven's harmony in all these lines you're gonna see that there is a repetition of the consonant sound okay if there is a repetition of the consonant sound then definitely uh, you're gonna see that in uh, this poem also that there is a repetition of the sound okay wherever the repetition is you, you, is visible is quite visible to you then definitely you can just uh, consider it as the alliteration getting used he plants a friend of sun and sky he plants a friend of he plants a friend of sun and sky sir sir okay sir sir sound is repeated he plants a friend of sun and sky sir sir sound is repeated he plants a home to heaven and i home heaven happy twilight heard Hus in hushed and happy twilight heard in all of them you can see that there is a repetition of the vowel sound okay uh, so definitely there would be alliteration then the second literary device that is in use here we can see that that is personification personification try to understand what is personification um, like when we try to um, what we say animate or give life uh, to something which is um, what we say an object even um, or we we do not give the breathing uh, sort of um, like order to that for example like if somebody is not a human being and we give the human attributes to the, the person then definitely the, we are personifying the person we are giving the, the thing to be a personality which is human in nature so when we give human characteristics uh, to a certain thing then definitely it is a personification the poet personifies the tree when he calls it a friend of sun and sky because usually when we say friend we we use it in human uh, world we say that one person is friend of others or we are friend of somebody else uh, when we personify things uh, we, we personify like that only like if uh, if i say my pen is my friend 
then I personified the, the pen as well uh, to call it my friend. So friend can only be humans uh, in, uh, like in particular. We don't know exactly how they call themselves to be the friends if, if we talk about the animals. But usually when we consider it, we consider it to be the human attribute to, to call somebody to be the friend or call somebody to be human. So in that case, it will be personification. So let me, uh, let me just wait a bit. Let me focus on that. Put a focus on that. Yeah. So that is personification. And the third literary device that is used in the poem is metaphor metaphor okay so uh, i've already explained what is the meaning of metaphor and how it is used uh, in different uh, poems and how like lots of poets use that okay just wait a bit i'm just getting confused in this eye only hiding the panel and all that okay yeah metaphor metaphor is an implied comparison uh, between two different things where there is a point of similarity okay for example, uh, here you, if, if, if I have to tell you in simple words, for example, if I say that he is like a lion and he is a lion. So there is a difference. The, the, implied, the implied comparison is simply like if I say that he is a lion. So that is implied comparison. If I say he is like a lion, that is a simile. So there is a difference between the metaphor and the simile. Both of them are used for the comparison. But metaphor is used when there is implied comparison. But uh, simile is used when we simply say that like something is like or as something else so that is the thing so in the poem how it is used the flag of breezes free the flag of breezes free so the flag of breezes free we have called it the like the the tree to be called as uh, like the the flag okay the flag of breezes free so we we compared it stick to the flag so that is why the shaft of beauty towering high the shaft of beauty shaft of beauty we call it the shaft of the beauty that means we compare it state to it implied comparison is done so that is why it is a metaphor are the examples of the metaphors in the poem and here the leafy branches of the tree are compared to the flag and the stem is compared to the beautiful shaft standing high so that is how it is used now this is beautiful one now circumlocution 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 what is circumlocution in a circumlocution something is referred to in a roundabout way circum like usually uh, when we say circumference or circumlocution we we think like something in the circular circular way okay roundabout way okay roundabout way using different words rather than stating it's like when somebody doesn't come uh, on to the point okay state to the point instead of coming to state to the point goes roundabout okay roundabout that instead of coming straight to the point then we say we are using circumlocution when like whenever you see something like that the person is not coming to the point or even in the prose uh, if you if you see that in a novel or in a drama if you see that you can say that circumlocution is the device getting used in that so in this one how is it like using uh, different words rather than stating it directly using days to be days to be is used okay for, for future and simply saying that to the to, to be called as future the person has used days to be the unborn eyes we know that whose unborn eyes we are talking about instead of saying the next generation the person used unborn eyes so that is why these are the two examples which are clearly depicting that uh, circumlocution is used in the poem now the next one is mitonymy mitonymy what is mitonymy what is mitonymy Mitonymy is a figure of speech uh, where one word or the phrase is substituted by another one closely associated with, with it. Like closely associated with it. We simply say closely associated with it. We do not have to think of anything else. We are closely associating it with something else. <clears throat> In the first stanza of this poem, there are two mitonyms. What are those? Like he plants a home to heaven an eye. He plants a home to have an eye. We have used like have an eye is used near the heaven. Here heaven represents the sky. We are using the heaven word which is quite closely associated with the uh, sky. So that is why we think usually the human beings think that the sky um, is the place where heaven is. So that is why 
closely associated word is used as we normally think that the heaven is situated somewhere in the up in the sky that the point actually means that the man who plants a tree also plants a home for the bird high in the sky so <clears throat> simply using the 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 words which actually are associated words instead of using um, you know exactly what he means to say he, he wants to say sky but he's using heaven instead of that one okay so that is mitonym okay mitonymy we call it mitonym would be the word called okay then in the next one is the treble of heaven's harmony the treble treble is like the pitch range of the highest female voice so treble is used to mean the song or simply the sound which birds make so uh, the word which is associated with the uh, with, with the birds sound is used that is treble so when the closely associated word is used we simply say that the mitonym is used okay mitonym is used so another example beautiful example is the joy that unborn eyes shall see so here eyes eyes means the child so closely associated word with the children like that is i okay a part of the body represent the whole okay so thus it can also be called as snake dodge okay it is one of the class of the mitonymy okay so when we say mitonymy mitonymy will have different categories and one of the category under the mitonymy would be snake dodge what is that this is another literary device that you you should understand that is snake dodge very beautiful device it is you should know that what is snake dodge snake dodge is something like when a part of the body representing the whole like here eyes means that the whole child <clears throat> here eyes when we when the person use unborn eyes eyes represent like one part of the body which actually depicts the whole uh, child so that is why when when a part of the body represent the whole we can call it snake dodge but remember that remember it always remember that snake dodge is also the category comes under mitonymy okay there are lots of mitonymy getting used so snake dodge is one of the category that in that he plants a sap and leaf and wood he plants in sap and leaf and wood here <clears throat> somehow there are two literary devices getting used in this let me tell you this is also the like repetition of something repetition of the conjunction is also a literary device we'll see that uh, like uh, within some time you see uh, this is another instance of mitonymy that snake dodge you can see that where sap and leaf and wood actually they are the part of a plant okay sap leaf and wood they are the, they are referred to the tree you know it's a big thing tree is a big thing sap leaf and wood are the small things the small thing when a, a part of that one represent the whole thing then we say there is snake dodge and snake dodge is one of the mitonymy okay the part refers to the whole once again you can see that then thereafter you can see yeah high pelage we can call it high pelage or what we what else we can say that um, transferred epithet transferred epithet so transferred epithet is an adjective word okay so transferred epithet is an adjective word and it is a figure of speech uh, where an adjective grammatically qualifies a noun other than a person or a thing it is actually describing so when when a particular adjective okay grammatically qualifies a noun other than the person or the thing it is actually describing so then it will it will be called as hyperlage or the transferred epithet you going to see that in hushed and happy to elight hard in this one you going to see that here the adjective happy okay if you going to see that happy is used with to elight okay so but actually though it means the people's happiness in in an hour okay the people's happiness in an hour i'm really sorry for wrong pronunciation um uh, the adjective happy is used with the twilight but actually what exactly it is representing it means the people's happiness in an hour okay the and in hushed and happy twilight heard okay so it's it's representing something else okay 
so it is trying to describe something else but it is qualifying the noun it is qualifying the noun that is used with the twilight twilight is the noun here okay but actually what it means is different one it is trying to explain something else it is describing something else okay now uh, let me hide this enumeration next is enumeration so this is the second last one in this uh, particular poem enumeration enumeration from uh, the word itself you can count that it will be about listing things it will be about numbering the things enumeration is an act of listing things one by one it's already given there it is a type of amplification amplification may be modification or some sort of division okay it's a type of amplification or division in which a subject is further distributed into components of the parts okay when we are trying to list the things down and we are trying to transfer that one into different other forms of the words then we say there is enumeration getting done so in the poem the poet has conveyed three different benefits of the plantation in three different stanzas like for example uh, three different benefits have been uh, implanted in the different stanzas like in the the first one you can see the maintaining the beauty of the nature uh, duties uh, to the future generation and contribution to the nation's growth so three things have been used okay the device of enumeration in the poem is detailed here how has the poet enumerated things in the heart of the tree okay so enumeration means trying to divide the subject into three different components or the three different parts so that is enumeration that is also the literary device getting used in the line i told you i told you the last one and i told you that when uh, there is a repetition of the conjunctions what are conjunctions and an and he plants in sap and leaf and wood okay so if somebody asks you that there what are the different literary devices you can mention that simply like that because they are also telling you about the different parts actually representing the whole you can call it as snick dodge also because it is representing the whole also okay uh, sap leaf and wood but there is the conjunction there is a the presence of the conjunction as well brother and the sisters you can see that there is a the presence of conjunctions and an and is repeated okay when there is a repetition of that same then definitely you can consider it that there is polysyndeton what is the literary device called as when there is a repetition of the 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 conjunction closely close repetition it it will be so that is that will be polysyndeton we call it polysyndeton and for more information you can actually check that um, check all these literary devices in the Uh, book by M H Abraham that is literary devices it itself you can buy that one online and it uh, maybe it will be available on in, in the on the PDF drive also you you can check that out there as well so I hope so that you have understood each and every uh, of these literary devices uh, let me just um, tell you what are the different literary devices once more uh, in the recap. Uh, first is the alliteration second is the personification metaphor then circumlocution and then is mitonymy mitonymy's category is snake dodge okay and then there is hyperlage and uh, epi uh, trans transferred epithet and then there is the last one that is enumeration and the, the actually the last one is polysyndeton so these were the literary devices of the poem uh, now what we call it the heart of the tree it's, that's a beautiful poem with a beautiful message kindly um, learn from all such poems because these were written to not only to um, just entertain you but also uh, just to get some idea from the same and apply that in your life so thank you very much uh, once again god bless you all and keep watching english lovers by hanedi uh, subscribe my channel and tell your friends and others to uh, join me as well I have recently made a short video um, on the kind of courses and the kind of uh, uh, availability of the subjects that are there in my institute. So kindly go through that as well. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Good night. Take care.